Today, Star Trek predicts the future again. A computer virus is used as a weapon. Yeah! This is the Star Trek Critic, probably the most unconventional Trek review where I make snarky comments like I know more than the producers. The first point is lost since they call the ship Yamato, when in Japanese it is really pronounced Yamato. Hopefully, 300 years in the future, when the only language in the galaxy is English, they will recognize the original pronunciation. As usual, on the bridge whenever somebody goes through the doors and extra crosses. Another point lost for a teenager flying the ship. I know he is a genius and taking college courses, but he hasn't been certified as a pilot yet. If they hit a bump, the taxpayers who pay for this ship will be furious. Their sister ship, the Yamato, is having a total systems failure, and they think it's a design flaw that's affecting them. The card sings his favorite song from Wally, then uses a stale pickup line on Captain Varley. Captain Varley's like, yeah, you've been out in space way too long. I will have to take a point since they never consider anything like a virus. Even as early as the original Battlestar Galactica, they consider programming the captive Psylogs with an invasive program. Card asks if it's a design flaw, but Varley thinks it's the third baseman that's sabotaging the ship. So Varley has been doing some archaeological work on the Iconians. But since Starfleet is a taxpayer-funded defense force, they have to blame the Romulans for something, or they will never get funding to be out here. The card says, I do the same thing with the Enterprise, searching for artifacts on foreign planets, then blaming the Romulans for being out here. No wonder they hate us. Worf says the Yamato is going to explode. This is a good special effect of the ship exploding with a piece hitting the Enterprise, but it's highly unlikely the skin of the saucer section would peel off like that, which was done so they couldn't find any survivors, so at minus one point. Aww. And minus one point for the black squares on the console in the back prevent reflection. Minus one point for Diana Mulder not being listed as a regular. Picard wants to know why the Romulan ship is there. She says they are searching for ancient artifacts and blaming Starfleet incursions to continue federal funding. Picard's like, well that sounds like what we're doing. Now they accuse each other of claim jumping. They really get after Worf for his speculation of what happened to the ship. Then Worf says, guys, you saw my grandfather on Star Trek VI. That was 75 years ago. I know it's possible. Number one says, I number one. Minus one point for credit seven minutes into the show. Jordy says the Yamato explosion was a perfect storm of bad things all happening at once. This distracts them into thinking it was a design flaw instead of a computer virus. But what if the virus is programmed to make it look like a design flaw? Now they just look for design flaws and let the virus continue its course. Smart virus. Look closely, the stars are slowly moving right to left. Now they're moving left to right, so minus one point. Of course, real astronauts would tell you, that's not what they look like at all. Captain Varley brags about stealing an ancient artifact for his collection, thanks to taxpayer money paying him to fly anywhere he wants to in a spaceship. Then he quickly blames the Romulans to make you think that's why he's really out there. The card is also thinking, that's why we're out here, making up fake problems so we can find ancient artifacts and sell them to collectors on eBay. There are some star date inaccuracies on his captain's log, but since there's a computer virus taking over, I can't take a point. Aww. Captain Varley recites love poetry he created. Now the door doesn't work. The card's thinking, great, this is going to the blooper reel or something is wrong. And where is that extra that always crosses when someone goes through the doors? Okay, there he is. Data says I number two. They all think, ooh, pretty. This is what destroyed the Yamato, so let's go see if it happens to us. Wesley says I number three. Wesley comes in to have a father-son talk. He says, Captain Picard, I know you're going to get us all into trouble with the Romulans when all you want to do is look for ancient artifacts you can sell to collectors on eBay. And I know you're in cahoots with your old instructor, and then you're going to go rogue on your own pirate mission, and then you're going to relocate the Indians. Picard says, yep, you discovered the secret of all starship captains. And Wesley, you should really stop smoking that peace pipe with the Traveler. Picard mentions Marco Polo, and then says colonizers are not conquerors. This must give today's woke liberals an instant emotional meltdown. How many times in Star Trek do they mention a Stargate? But that's not why you're here. Wesley says, how do you all stop thinking about the Yamato? Picard answers, you know in the Mirror Universe, promotion is done by elimination? We do it here too. But now that the Yamato crew is gone, a lot of us are going to get promoted too. So it's really not that big of a deal. And Wesley's like, wow, that's not what I thought you were going to say at all. Jean-Luc performs a Picard maneuver, orders Earl Grey tea for the first time, and gets a plant. 
minus one point for no star date on the captain's log. This could be the last log, you never know. Jordy is addicted to the concept of time. He believes he can capture time to control the universe. The Iconian planet looks like it was destroyed by the Borg. Oh look, they launched a probe. Maybe we should raise our shields. Jordy says, don't catch the probe, but the intercom goes out. He does not try his combat, so minus one point. And he does not tell anyone in engineering to try to call the bridge, so minus one more point. He just wants to make a dramatic run for it. This is the saucer section's curved hallway, so minus one point. Check out that line of sweat on his back. Shout out to LeVar Burton wearing the blind contacts while he's getting thrown around. And minus one point for an obvious stunt double doing a fake throw out of the turbo lift. Minus one point for a visible boom mic reflecting off the panel in the back. Jordy learns it's a computer virus, but they don't seem to have any protocols on how to clean a virus from the system, so minus one point. They got the virus by downloading the captain's log, so going to the log they could probably isolate the virus. Down in sick bay, Pulaski tells the doctor to use a splint. He's like, are you kidding me? This is my one time to be on Star Trek and I have to use an old fashioned splint? The extra in engineering got to ride the elevator. Pulaski's like, yes, but you have a speaking part so you get more money. But the doctor's thinking, well, I want to ride the elevator too. Jordy gets blasted and asks, what happened? Data says, well, your stunt double is still here and the producer decided it would be cheaper to pay him to do two stunts for you instead of pay a second stunt double for me or war. And then Jordy's like, yep, those cheap bastards, that's what I thought. In the ready room, John Luke almost performs a Picard maneuver while Riker describes the fate of woke liberalism. Picard says, I'm beaming down to the Iconia site to look for lost treasures. But Riker says, that's my job and you know it. And we should really just send a probe first or else the narrator will take another point. Picard says, who cares? We make more money than that narrator and we can do what we want. Riker's thinking, well, if he doesn't come back, I'm in charge. O'Brien says, I number four. The Romulans are back and now the shields are playing whack-a-mole. Riker and Terrace go into a pissing match. Terrace thinks it's the second baseman that's causing all the problems. Just like today, if you download somebody else's software illegally, you're gonna get the virus too. Riker's like, ha ha, they got the virus too. As usual, I'm always a fan of map paintings. And it's amazing that to make something look like it's out of science fiction, just put a big blue ball in the middle. Data says, I number five. Thankfully, they know a lot about ancient languages to figure this out. Deanna is a little jumpy. Riker says, is the crew worried about the Romulans? Deanna says, no, they're all having a pre-explosion orgy down below and I don't get to join. Riker says, what should we do to run their party? Deanna says, doing the evacuation drill, which we should actually do once a month like lifeboat drills on cruise ships. Riker says that's a great idea, you go organize it. Then Deanna leaves the bridge. Of course, she never does the light boost drill, she just goes and joins the orgy. Data mispronounces his favorite Lucille Ball movie. The card sings the Data song. And they're thinking, yes, we have our own Stargate now. Data wants to go through. Worf says, what is that? The card says, that's Toronto, Canada. 200,000 years ago, the Iconians escaped through the Stargate and became Native Americans. Worf and Data are like, nah, you're making that up. Suddenly they decide this is only a transporter room and not a military center. In a nutshell, Picard says they really don't know if the Iconians were good or bad. Now Data gets zapped. Worf says I number six. Worf says I number seven. Minus one point here. Picard should have gone back to the Enterprise with Worf and Data and destroyed the site from space. Minus one point for destroying the tricorder before seeing if it has instructions on how to destroy the site. Worf and Picard have a man moment. Aww. Look closely, Worf switches hands holding Data, so minus one point. Jordy actually mentions Commander Maddox. Minus one point for Data's eyes flickering after he died. Picard sings Kendar We Kendar Pro. Riker's like, what kind of a song is that? And they quickly learn the age-old process of powering down and powering back up again to clear a virus from the system. Will be harder to turn the Enterprise off though. Jordy's explanation is to create a restore point on the ship's computer. As usual, Star Trek predicts the future. Data wants to know what happened after his restore point. Is this the first time Riker says make it so? The card stays behind to be the hero, which is totally unnecessary, then ends up on the Romulan ship. Oh, she really knows how to cuss in Romulan, doesn't she? Minus one point for the Romulan strangely disappearing when you transport, and minus one point for talking while transporting at the same time. Riker tells the Romulans, just turn it off and turn it back on again. Riker says, I number eight. The card is way too happy to get off the ship and cause trouble for change. 
The ships fly off peacefully as the site explodes, although in reality it probably took hours for the two ships to be able to take off. So, who were the Iconians? Volker Schmidt was the doctor. Dana Sparks was a regular on Falcon Chris and the soap opera Passions. She loves dogs. Carolyn Seymour has 125 screen credits including Space 1999, Magnum, and Babylon 5. She will be back a few more times on TNG and Voyager. Thalmas Frosulala has 85 screen credits including the original Twilight Zone, Mission Impossible, Root, The Incredible Hulk, and TJ Hooker. Contagion, which successfully told a pre-computer generation about computer viruses, gets a score of 76. Thanks for watching. Please leave comments below. Click that like button, the share button, the subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon.